we've got to have a conversation about Colorado, everybody. We've got to have a conversation about Colorado. There are a lot of Colorado haters out there. I have said over and over again, I am not one of them. I picked Colorado to win six or seven games this year. I thought they would be improved. I did not think they would be as improved as they are now. And the problem with all of this, I definitely want to get into the aspect of how so many people want to never give them credit, but also on the same token, by the same token, on the flip side of this is the fact that Colorado could have been done. You had the chance to put a knife through any of this discussion with Colorado and it didn't happen. You had a chance to, it wouldn't really be final nail in the coffin, but you had a chance to really stave this off and you didn't. And now coach prime is here. Travis Hunter is here. Shador Sanders is here and they are gaining energy and momentum and becoming a better football team right in front of our eyes. Um, as somebody who had them as a six or seven win football team this year, they definitely look like they're capable of more than that to me. Now, I don't think it is likely still that they would win the big 12 and go to the playoff, but they deserve to be in the contender category for the first time this year. After Saturday's drubbing of UCF winning by four scores at the bounce house, they are very much in the contender conversation. UCF's resume did have flaws coming in. They just, you know, who had they played? Great comeback win at TCU, but TCU has not been overly impressive to me so far this year. That had come into question. But, uh, man, I, I sure thought UCF would be able to run the ball. I sure thought UCF would be able to run the ball. They couldn't, not to the extent that they typically do. Colorado held them basically 200 yards below their season average on the ground. You know what that means? You got to look close carefully before you say this. It means Colorado's getting a defense. Colorado's getting a bit of a defense, everybody. That was the thing along with the offensive line that we really wondered about for Colorado. And what did Colorado do in this game? They played some defense and they actually ran the ball a little bit. Now it's, it's nothing crazy. This is nothing crazy. I would not be writing home about this necessarily on its face in a vacuum. But when you've got Shador Sanders and you've got one of, if not the absolute best receiving cores in the nation, all you need is a little bit to quote the great prophet 50 cent. All you need is a little bit. All you need is a little bit of a run game. And when they rush for 128 yards over hundred yards for the second time in three weeks, we're seeing progress. We're seeing progress with the Colorado running game. If you do that, it's enough to keep the defense back on its heels a bit to provide Shador Sanders all that he needs to get those receivers plenty involved and make that offense really, really pop. So they're doing that. Check on that. Having Dallin Hayden back certainly helps, but Colorado's doing it with a bunch of different running backs. They throw a bunch of different looks at you, and whatever it takes, man, whatever it takes – to generate a bit of a ground game, more than fine. Shador, I thought, was protected, protected a little bit better against UCF. I mean, it's still, there, there are times where he's going to be running around, and I don't think that's going to change the entire year. But I was about to say, you know, the offensive line, they are what they are. But that may not really be true because, again, they're starting to figure out the running game. I think they're getting a bit better. And the same with the defense. They forced four turnovers as I mentioned, they held UCF almost 200 yards below their season average in rushing yards. Hey, the defense is showing improvement. It may not be great, but it is getting better. And if you put an average defense with an average running game with Colorado's passing game, you definitely have something there. And they appear to be getting closer to that, which I did not think that we would see that kind of improvement. They need to sustain it. I get it. Totally there with you, but these are positive signs that if it were any team other than Colorado, I, I really want to accentuate this point. If it were any team other than Colorado doing this and they, they had the same rap sheet going into the year, the same perceived weaknesses going into the year, and they all of a sudden started to do this, we'd look around and say, hey, that coach is doing a really nice job. Like they're coming around, they're getting better. But because of people's 
preconceived notions on Colorado. I feel like a lot of times we just don't afford the same ability for them to grow that we would with other teams. And I'm even guilty of that as somebody who I would say that I was not an over the top Colorado hater. I genuinely am not think they're good for the conference. Coach prime's entertaining. Want to see them succeed. I did not cut them the same slack that I probably would other teams and just assuming, Hey, they'll get better throughout the year. I think it's because everyone thought like, yeah, you know, I don't know. This still seems like kind of a, too much of a circus and they've had too much transition and too, you know, they're figuring it out one way or another. They're getting better. You have to acknowledge that. That's part of what I'm here to say today about Colorado. You better acknowledge that. Even if you're a hater, you better acknowledge that they're getting better in the two areas they really needed to get better in. And that especially after watching the Nebraska game, I think everybody thought, well, you know, here comes that word again, manhandled. They were totally manhandled by Nebraska. They're, they're just never going to be physical enough on defense or in their running game offensively. Totally wrote it all off. Now it's like, maybe we shouldn't have done that, you know, in week, what, three of the college football season, or was that week two? You know, hey, we shouldn't do that just a couple of weeks into September. Even if it's Colorado and you think that Coach Prime isn't that great of a coach, maybe it can happen. It is. Seems like Coach Prime knows what he's doing, and he's doing a pretty good job getting these guys better. Um, UCF. Missed opportunity. By the same token, missed opportunity. I thought that was going to be coming out party for UCF. Big noon kickoff is there. You're going to get a huge audience. People watching coach prime, the best game in the two thirty window was on Peacock. So you're going to have people that aren't going to want to go there. They'll just flip on Fox and watch coach prime and you get to play. You've got the best rushing attack in the country. You've got one of the best running backs in the country and RJ Harvey. You've got a chance to put that on center stage. You know, here's our guys outside Heisman shot, you know, type of campaign here for RJ Harvey. Get that rolling. None of that happened. Colorado controlled that game from the jump. Colorado looked like the better team all the way through. There was nothing fluky about that. They controlled the game. Outplayed them all the way through. R.J. Harvey finishes under 100 yards, 77 yards on 16 carries. Did have a 75-yard touchdown catch, in fairness. Um, But that was not like the introduce R.J. Harvey as total star to to the world type of performance. Instead, it was... Confirm for everybody that uh, Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter in particular are absolute stars. That's what we're talking about. People are talking about Travis Hunter. They're talking about Shador Sanders. They're talking about Coach Prime after the game, not UCF. Massive missed opportunity there for uh, the Knights. Hate to admit it, I've been um, high on them since the offseason. I really like UCF. I like Gus. They still need to show me something. They need to show me a little bit more. Nice win at TCU, but it's clear that they are uh, maybe not as close to bona fide contender status as we thought going into that game based on the way Colorado was able to play there. And now the good news for the league is that you're you're going to get – you are going to get more eyeballs and attention on you as the Colorado hype machine will continue to roll. I said two weeks ago going into the Baylor game – if Colorado loses, you may start to see some people really jumping off here. Actually, I take that back. It was the Colorado State game before that. If Colorado loses, you'll see people really start to jump off. The excitement will dwindle because it was sort of at a lull at that point after the Nebraska thing happened and they barely beat North Dakota State. But they go out with a really solid performance against Colorado State and then they pull one from they pull a victory from the jaws of defeat against Baylor. Then they go whack UCF. And now, I mean, this thing is humming. The hype machine is humming. It's going to be loud. The K-State Colorado game in two weeks, both teams have a bye before it. It's going to be two, four and one teams. That's going to get a lot of attention. That game is going to get a lot of attention. It's in a crowded week of college football. I get it. But that game will generate a lot of attention and people are going to continue caring about Colorado. And that's why if you are a hater, if you're a buff hater, you should have killed them when you had the chance. Uh, for any fellow emo kids out there like myself, a day to remember as a song, you should have killed me when you had the chance. That's what Colorado is saying right now. That's what coach prime is saying to Baylor because had you just not given up the hail Mary, win the game, don't allow them to a win the game, but B win the game on such an iconic play that everybody is talking about and watching. 
Colorado could have been much, much closer to down and out, but now they are not. They are very much not. Should have knocked them out when you had the chance. Don't let Coach Prime hang around and start developing a defense and developing a running game. And it appears that we are seeing some of that happening right now. So um, good news for attention on the league. Good news for back to Mike Gundy, who said at Big 12 Media Days, he understands we need eyeballs. Coach Prime brings that. Good news for all of that, but bad news for anybody that's going to be playing them the rest of the year and thinking about what it means for like a Big 12 title race. Uh, Because Colorado is now showing me that they have the capabilities as a program of building to a team that could make it to Arlington. That's what I'm seeing. Now, there are a lot of qualifiers there, and that is on purpose. But I did not believe that in my heart of hearts until I saw what I saw on Saturday with them outplaying whistle to whistle, start to finish UCF at the bounce house. Impressive, impressive stuff from Colorado. Uh, You got to give it up for them. You got to give it up for them.